Hey there, Bruce, and welcome back to Remember Eleven. Uh, we just jumped back to Sphere, and it looks like shit is going down again, so uh, let's see what shit specifically. Maybe Inabushi Kaiko slit our throat in our sleep. I don't fucking know. <laughs> All of a sudden, I lost my balance. I was supposed to be climbing the ladder in the shelter cabin, but now I was groveling on a concrete floor. Groveling's a great word. Did I miss my footing and fall down? That's what I thought at first. But wait, something's wrong. There's no shock from a fall. I couldn't see anything in front of me. Eh? Still on all fours, I tried to make sense of the situation as best I could. Did I transfer? The air is faintly warm. There's no smell of burning wood. There seems to be Sphere. But where in Sphere am I? What's going on here? Intense pain radiated from the back of my head and throughout my body. A throbbing pain resounded inside my head. Ugh. Touching the back of my head brought acute pain. Struck by vertigo, I felt nauseous. I tried getting up, but I couldn't even put power into my legs, let alone stand up. What's this? What's going on? I was taken aback. Someone's here. Somewhere behind me, someone's drawing near. Who? Itsumi? Yuni? Hatori? And Ibushi Kaiko? I turned around right away. Just then, uh, with a ferocious strike to my face, I was sent flying. This is the first time I've been hit this hard. I lost control of my body due to the pain and impact of the fall. Someone was bending over me. I couldn't see the face of that someone in the dark. Who? Who is that? What is this? What's going on? It hurts. Someone help me. Got to escape. Where am I? I was hit? I'll be killed. The iron taste of blood spread throughout my mouth. The darkness severely limited my vision. Why would someone do this to me? But my thoughts were in panic. No. No. Screaming, I started struggling recklessly. But that someone got on top of me, pinned me down and began choking me to shut me up. Aren't we a giant dude? Like, if the other people here are a small girl, a small boy, and a middle-aged woman. The middle-aged woman's the only one who's got even a fucking hope in hell of pinning us down. Painful. Can't breathe. I'll die. I'll die like this. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I started to flail with all my might. Then my swinging arm connected luckily with the jaw of that someone. The mysterious assailant's hold on my throat weakened. Using that chance, I pushed someone away with all my strength. Crawling on all fours, I managed to put some distance between me and the attacker in the pitch black room. And then before my eyes were shelves. As quickly as I could, I moved into the space between the shelves. I held my breath. I curled my trembling body up, burying my face in my legs. I couldn't silence my breathing. My teeth clattered, chattered loudly. I'm likely going to end up. I'm likely to end up screaming. I put my fist in my mouth and bit down hard. I can't make a single sound. I'll be found. Afraid of the mysterious assailant, I kept my voice held back. How long was it? That someone hadn't pursued me. Not a single sound. It was so quiet, my ears hurt. To figure out where I was, I timidly look around my surroundings. The room was dim. If I'm not careful, this dusty air will cause me to cough violently. On the shelves I was hiding between, many cardboard boxes were piled up. A row of several other shelves were visible. I can't see too well, but in the middle of the room, there are many scattered boxes as if a storm had hit there. This is the underground storeroom, which means the exit is... I recalled the times I'd been here before and guessed the direction of the exit. Quietly, I peeked out. There. In the dim light, I saw the indistinct handrail of the stairs to the upper floor. From where I was crouching, it was about five meters to the stairs. If I make a run for it... Hi. Startled, I barely managed to cover my mouth. That someone may still be lurking here, or the assailant may have already left. If they're near, just thinking of the attacker that made me tremble, made me tremble once more. Someone, just now, had tried to kill me. Satoru. I sensed a spine-chilling thirst for blood, a thirst that made the hair on my body stand on end. I drew my arms around myself. Holding my breath, I strained my ears. They began to ring. Other than that, I heard nothing. If this someone is lying in wait, waiting for me to make a move, the moment I take a single step toward the exit, I'll be assaulted from the darkness. I don't want to move. I'm scared. But there's not a chance that I'll continue to wait here patiently. I can't stand the fear and tension. I have to go. I'll certainly be okay. It's no more than five meters. If I dash through the room without looking back, it shouldn't take me more than three seconds to reach the stairs. As long as I can get out of this room, I'll manage whatever comes somehow. Assuring myself, I mustered up my courage. I stood up silently. My head still throbbed with pain. Moreover, the numbing pain in my face is still here too. The pain made me remember the fear, and my will faltered slightly. I returned to my crouching position. 
until a short while ago, I was in the shelter cabin with Uni and Yamoki. I was so glad I wasn't alone, and yet I'm alone now, scared to death by the presence of a murderer. Why? Why am I alone in this situation? Tears seeped out. I wanted to cry and give up on everything, yet in my despair, my strength returned. This body is Satoru's. I have no intention of letting him be killed. I'm not alone. No, I'm not alone. I breathed deeply, over and over. Once again, I took stock of my surroundings. Not a single trace of anybody, not even a sound. I readied myself and ran to the stairs with all my power. I felt something moving be behind me, but I won't look back. I clung to the handrail and quickly ran up the stairs. There's no one in the kitchen. I hesitated. Where should I run to? Nothing but anxious thoughts crossed my mind. Wherever I run, traps may await me. Wherever I run, the criminal may anticipate my moves. Wherever I run, as long as I'm in this facility, the criminal will come after me. I was startled. Down the stairs from the underground storehouse, I could hear footsteps. As I thought, that someone didn't leave. Their breathing was silent. The strong intent to kill still focused on me. I'm scared. I'm scared. Where? Where do I run? I was stunned by the overwhelming terror. When I came to my senses, I was running. I ran from the hall to the outside of the sphere, delirious from terror. I regretted rushing outside. The sun had already set. Snow fell in the pitch dark. My whole body was chilled instantly. I wasn't wearing anything warm right now. I only have one shirt on. Should I turn back? But if I go back now, that someone who assailed me might be waiting to ambush me. I'm sure that the someone saw me go outside. I'm sure that that person is waiting patiently on the other side of the door. But even so, the air is so cold it stings. My hair and clothing are getting soaked by the falling snow, making me even colder. I rub my upper arms desperately. I'm going to freeze to death if I stay here. What do I do? What do I do? What? That sound? Don't tell me the door was locked. I rush over to the door in a panic. Even if I stood in front of it, it wouldn't open. I'm locked out. Well, that's all the killer had to do was lock us out and then we'll just stay out here and die in the cold. Stuck outside in this weather with only one shirt on? In desperation, I beat on the door relentlessly, but the door gave no response. The steel door blocked my way heartlessly. No way. I'm going to die here. I'm going to freeze to death. I stood up on unsteady feet. One way or another, I have to go back inside. If I don't look for a way in, even if I do manage to get back, the murderous monster might be waiting inside. Even so, it doesn't seem like I could simply put up with this cold. Okay, we got to be careful because if we get this wrong, we probably die. To be honest, right? Walk along the wall, we got to find another way in. It's dangerous to move around at random. The premises of Sphere are large. It would be disastrous if I got lost. I recalled several incidents in narrow ski resort areas where victims died very close to the hotel. I started to walk around the building, along the walls of the facility. I really have no clue where I'm going. Eventually I reached the terrace. From the window, the lights of the living area shone brightly. Surveying the room, there wasn't a trace of anyone inside. Yuni, Utsumi and Hattori, where did they all go? They couldn't have... An unpleasant premonition crossed my mind. Did that someone also attack them? Shaking my head, I tried to erase that idea. I tried to see whether or not I could open the window. Was the window locked from the inside, or would it just not open? In any case, checking out the window yielded no favourable results. I gave up on the window and left. The splitting pain in my head was unbearable and my consciousness was starting to slip away. After a while, a small window came into sight. I peeked inside. It was a private room. My body won't stop shaking. I can't feel my limbs anymore. Walking with my dull legs feels like swinging massive logs. My vision is blurry too. If I don't hurry up and do something, I'll collapse soon. Trying my best to regain a bit of my dimming consciousness. I peek inside the window. Whose room is this? It was dreary inside. I saw something like a notepad on the desk. I recognised the deep red coat hung near the window. This is Hattori's room. Clanging on to the small hope that it would open, I tried pushing the window. It didn't open. It's no good, huh? Why won't any of these windows open? And then I remembered. Satoru's room. During the day, I'd open the window to ventilate the room. Uni closed it soon after, but I don't think he locked it. Let's go to Satoru's room. Since this is Hattori's room, Satoru's room, where was it again? Where do I go next? Fuck, I don't remember. <laughs> you expect me to remember this shit? Oh my god, I'm nearly out of save files. Let's go right. I began walking toward the terrace. If I remember correctly, Satoru's room is this way. My steps are uncertain. 
Due to the incessant snow and wind, just crossing the terrace was a laborious task. My physical strength was being sapped by the cold. I can't even walk in a straight line. If I can't reach Satoru's room, it's just a matter of time before I pass out. <sighs> How did things end up like this? What did I ever do? Thinking of my hopeless situation caused me to start sobbing uncontrollably. The tears won't stop. The tears running down my cheek felt unbearably cold. Walking in a daze, I reached another room. I tried to push open the window, almost clinging onto it. Why won't it open? I don't remember locking it. Leaning against it, I took a look inside. Deep inside the dark room, women's clothes were lying folded on top of the bed. This, this is Utsumi-san's room. Damn, I was wrong. Satoru's room was on the other side. Should I go back? I considered that for a moment, but I shook my head. It's impossible. In this snow, I can't circle around the building and make it to the other, si other side. My legs won't move anymore. I'll go inside from here. I eagerly brushed away the snow with hands that felt like sticks. I thought about looking for a stone, but I couldn't find one. <sighs> my vision was blurred. My body was numb from the cold. I suddenly felt a hard object with my numb fingertips. A stone. A stone the size of a fist. I don't even have enough strength to grip it. Holding it between my hands, I lifted the stone up. Using every bit of strength in my body, I heaved the stone against the window. Over and over and over again. Like a madman, I kept pounding away with the rock and then... It broke. I thrust my hand in through the crack. Turning to crescent lock, I opened the window. Luckily, the interior window wasn't locked. Well, the murderer nearly got us. Warm air wrapped around my body. I'm saved. Tears flow out from sheer relief, I felt. Even my numb limbs had started to feel pain again. I hurriedly entered the bathroom. I warmed my hands with hot water from the shower. I gritted my teeth as I held my hands underwater so hot it made me instinctively want to spring back. Gradually, feeling came back into my fingertips. The sensation of pain returned. Then, because I'd suddenly made contact with the hot water, my body got goosebumps. Gazing into the mirror, I noticed that Satoru's face was a mess. It was wet and soggy with tears and snow. The lips were a ghastly blue, shivering from the cold. I also used the water to wash my face. Pleasant warmth sank into my body. Alive. I'm alive. I smiled without realising it. I was stranded out in the intense cold by the murderous monster, but I'd managed to return alive and safe. <laughs> I laughed as the warm steam washed over me. I'm alive! Huh? Suddenly I felt a sharp pain near my waist. I turned around slowly. Someone was standing there. Itsumi? I couldn't see their face. I had a feeling this is Itsumi's room. Next, a piercing pain through my back. I realised that a solid sharp object had pierced my body from behind. I've been stabbed with a knife. I guess I got the wrong answer that time. I collapsed into the bathtub. Blood began to pour from my body. From within my fading consciousness, I saw the face of the person raising the knife overhead. You're... <laughs> the story is not finished yet. Truth is not revealed and it circulates through an incident. It is an infinity loop. All right, let's jump back in, shall we? Uh, no, I don't need to save system data. Let's just carry on where we left off, shall we? Where do I go next? Advance along the wall to the left side. I began to walk to the left. My steps are uncertain. My physical strength being sapped away by the cold. I can't walk straight anymore. If I can't reach Satsuru's room, then it's just a matter of time before I pass out. How did things end up like this? What did I ever do? Thinking of my hopeless situation caused me to start sobbing uncontrollably. These are the same. The tears won't stop. The tears running down my cheek felt unbearably cold. Walking in a daze, I reached another room. It's Satoru's room. I mustered up the last of my strength and ran to the window. Pushing on the pane, I easily opened the window. I I'm saved. Relieved, I almost rolled my way into the room. Skills. Warm air wrapped around my body. I'm saved. Tears flowed out from the sheer relief I felt. Even my numb limbs had started to feel pain again. I hurriedly entered the bathroom. I warmed my hands with hot water from the shower. I gritted my teeth as I held my hands under the water so hot it made me instinctively want to spring back. Gradually, feeling came back into my fingertips. The sensation of pain returned. Then, because I'd suddenly made contact with the hot water, my body got goosebumps. Gazing into the mirror, I noticed Satoru's face was a mess. It was wet and soggy with tears and snow. The lips were a ghastly blue, shivering from the cold. I also used the water to wash my face. Pleasant warmth sank into my body. Alive. I'm alive. I smiled without realising it. I was stranded out in the intense cold by the murderous monster, but I managed to return alive and safe. <laughs> I laughed as the warm steam washed over me. I'm alive. Huh? Suddenly I felt a sharp pain near my waist. I turned around slowly. Someone was standing there. I couldn't see their face. 
Next, a piercing pain through my back. I guess I got one wrong before that. I realized the sharp, solid object had pierced my body from behind. I've been stabbed with a knife. In order to ambush me from in Satsuru's room. I collapsed into the bathtub. Poor, yeah, okay, okay, I see. We need to jump back further. Now we know. Wait, what was the choice before that one? I don't remember. Load. This one. Oh, walk away from the building, okay. Walk away from the building. For now I decided to walk away from the building. It's because I felt that murderous monster was watching my every move. They're planning on me coming back inside Sphere in a panic. The murderer probably has this in mind. I set my freezing feet in motion and started to walk. Stepping firmly onto the snow, I decided to take refuge in a part of Sphere where the light didn't reach. That was our first bad ending, by the way. With Sphere's gate locked behind me, I advanced diagonally to the right. It wasn't at all easy to walk in the thick snow. Every step I took sapped my energy. And then there was the snow. The falling snow was slowly narrowing my field of vision. A blizzard is near. When I turned around, the lights of Sphere were so small I was surprised. It was obstructed by the snow. This may have been the within the premises of Sphere, but one wrong move and I'll be lost. If I lose my way, I could go into hypothermia and lose consciousness and freeze to death. I need to set a reference point. What should I use for a reference point? A little troubled, I decided to use the basketball court. The basketball court should be slightly illuminated. Even if I get lost, I can use that as a landmark. Treading through the snow, I advanced step by step. <sighs> I started to lose feeling at my fingertips. They turned a violet colour. Due to the extreme cold, my teeth cl clattered. How long has it been? Cold. I collapsed on the spot. It hasn't been more than 10 minutes since I left Sphere, but I've lost all feeling in my arms and legs already. If I stay here, I'll die. I started moving my frozen limbs and tried to advance further. As I raised my head, I was horrified. The snow had completely closed my field of vision. This is a whiteout. I can't... I can't see anything. Which way should I go? My cry was sucked into the white darkness. Oh man. We're gonna die again. <laughs> Go forward. If I stop here, I'll die. I continued fumbling my way through the white darkness. The perfect whiteness of the storm obstructed even the tips of my own fingertips from view. I had no clue where I was. Am I heading towards Sphere, or maybe I'm heading the wrong way? I soon lost track of all that. Nothing but a pure white world without end. Oh no, are we gonna die again? Terrified, I screamed out loud. My cry too was sucked into the pure white darkness. In the white world that enveloped everything, I fell down. The cold snow covered me. Oh no, I just got Satoru killed now. Whoops. I was lying down on a wooden bed. The air was painfully cold. My breath settled down. This is the shelter cabin. A small fire was burning in the stove. However, to me who had just been walking in the snow, the blaze was a much appreciated blessing. I'm saved. I flew to the stove. I grabbed the stove, almost hugging it, but I immediately realized my mistake. No, I'm not safe at all. Satori's body was still in the snowfields of Sphere. Only my consciousness is transferred here. And at the exchange, Satori in the snow. I took out the VR. Yeah, he's gonna die. I turned on the switch impatiently and played it. No messages from him. I pushed the recording button. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry for having been locked out. I couldn't move in the snow anymore. Please, somehow, somehow be safe. I shut my eyes, pressing my hands together, and started praying. While trembling from the cold and praying, I desperately hit the VR switch. We're going back again? It's only been a couple of minutes, we'll still be in the snow. I transferred again. I collapsed on the snow. My limbs, which were frozen stiff, wouldn't move. I couldn't even close my eyelids. The snow struck my eyeballs. I'd stopped trembling. I couldn't even feel the cold. I couldn't hear anything. All I could feel was my heart pounding, as if it was defective. I slowly, slowly lose consciousness. I fall into the pure white darkness. I fall. I died again! Fuck! <laughs> Jesus! I really gotta stop dying so much right now. Who knew all of a sudden I was gonna die every fucking two seconds? 
We hadn't died once, and then all of a sudden we're dying every fucking two seconds. Which one is it? This one? 54? Oh wait, no, I saved a new one, didn't I? Hang on. Load. Stop. If I advance blindly, I'll just end up getting more lost. Keeping my emotions in check, I stopped moving. As the snow continued to fall, it began to erase my tracks. The cold air pierced my body, the same way a sharp sword would. I muttered in the snow white world. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Satoru. I'm no good, I guess. Despair took hold of my mind. Come on, but. Suddenly the wind blew. The white curtain disappeared for an instant. In front of me, I could see the basketball court. Let's go. Digging a path through the snow with my shaking hands, I began to move. I made it. After reaching the court, I followed my earlier path back to Sphere. With this little detour, the killer should lose me as well. How do we get back in? At last, I arrived at the terrace of Sphere. I held my breath, quietly looked for someone inside, but there wasn't a single trace of anyone. Hoping for some warmth, I clung to the window pane, but the glass didn't grant me any comfort. Yuni, Utsumi, and Hattori, where did they all go? No. An unpleasant premonition crosses my mind. Did that someone also attack them? Shaking my head, I tried to erase the idea. I tried to see whether or not I could open the window. Was the window locked from the inside, or would it just not open? In any case, checking out the window yielded no favourable results. I gave up on the window and left. My consciousness was starting to fade out due to the unbearable cold. After a while, a small window came into sight. I peeked inside. It was a private room. My body won't stop shaking. I can't feel my limbs anymore. Walking with my dull legs feels like swinging massive logs. My vision is blurry too. If I don't hurry up and do something, I'll collapse soon. This is the same thing again. Trying my best to regain a bit of my dimming consciousness, I peeked inside a window. Whose room is this? It was dreary inside. I saw something like a notepad on the desk. I recognized the deep red coat hung near the window. This is Hattori's room. Clinging onto the small hope that it would open, I tried pushing the window. It didn't open. It's no good, huh? Why would any of these windows open? And then I remembered. Satori's room. During the day I'd open the window to ventilate the room. Yuni closed it soon after, but I don't think he locked it. Let's go to Satori's room. Since this is Satori's room, which way? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, fuck, it was to the left side, right? I'm gonna save again. Although it's got grayed out, which means it's gonna be the same, which means we're gonna die anyway. Right? I'm gonna just skip and see what happens. Okay, we didn't die. Was that a scream? It sounded like a scream reached my ears. I could hear the wind and other high-pitched sounds, but that voice. Was it Uni screaming? Had Uni been assaulted by someone? I peered out of Satoru's room. The kitchen was dark. I frantically strained my eyes. I couldn't see anyone in there. What do I do? That voice I just heard definitely sounded like it was screaming. Moreover, it sounded like Uni's. The someone may have decided to target Uni instead of me. At this moment, right now, the assassin's knife may be pointed at him. I have to save him. I heard noises. They'd come from in the underground storeroom. Uni, are you there? Are you okay? Lowering my voice, I called out to him. There was no reply. I'm scared. Someone may burst out of it at any moment. I'm scared. But I bit my lip and stepped forward into the dark kitchen. Step by step, I advanced, peering down the stairway to the underground storeroom. I called out to him. Uni, if you're there, answer me. No reply came. A silence so total, it was painful, ensued. The stairway leading to the basement yawned open like the jaws of a monster. It was a pitch dark, pitch black downstairs. I stepped into the darkness, slowly climbing down the stairs. I'm scared, really scared. Because of the overwhelming terror, my legs wouldn't stop shivering. Cold sweat streamed down my forehead. My throat was dry. I raised my voice in the darkness as I descended into the underground storeroom. Please, if you're there, answer me, please. My voice was hoarse. Swallowing my saliva, I continued. Uni, are you alright? Silence was the only reply. Maybe the scream was a figment of my imagination. I should go back to the room. As I nodded to myself, I put my hand on the handrail. And then, in that instant... The sudden noise made me jump in fright. What was that? I focused my eyes and squinted to see as best I could in the darkness. At the edge of my vision, I saw a small rat run past me. I sighed in relief and put my hand to my chest. Ah, oh, just a rat. Huh? In that moment of relief, from the darkness, the shadow of a person rushed out. 
I was pushed aside by a strong force. I tumbled to the concrete floor. I sensed that someone behind me. I frantically turned around. Because of the darkness, I couldn't see that person's face. Instead, I saw something else. Something dreadful. In the dark, shining softly, was a knife. No, no. I frantically waved my arms in front of me, trying to push the body of that someone away from me. Oh shit, Satoru was so dead. Good timing though, you saved me, transfer. And killed Satoru though. K I let out a scream. What is it? Yamogi was there in front of me. What happened? The one that was chasing after me was Yamogi? Why was he at Sphere? Another fit? Yamogi stared at me worriedly as he spoke. I see, so a personality exchange occurred. I was sitting on a wooden bed. This isn't Sphere, this is the shelter cabin. Yet, whether because the flame in the stove was too small or something else, it was freezing cold. My breath was so white it felt like it might turn to ice any moment. I'm wrapped up to my shoulders in my blanket. <sighs> my heart continued to hammer like an alarm bell. Because my mind suddenly transferred while I was in a crisis, my body may be still be re reacting to it. You look pale. You alright? I'm fine. I nodded to Yamogi and returned to my own bed. After covering myself with my blanket, I closed my eyes. Really, I... I wasn't alright at all. I wanted to shout out loud for someone to save me. The fear of hunger and freezing to death. I still, I'm slowly dying here at the shelter cabin. And at Sphere, the hand of the murderous monster draws ever nearer. Being exposed to a never-ending succession of different terrors, my spirit is shattered. My heart didn't have time to calm down. If things keep going on like this, I'll break. I muttered through shivering lips. But now wasn't the time to be whining. While being chased by someone with a knife, my personality transferred to the shelter cabin. Right now, Satori's personality should be inside his body, which meant he suddenly transferred into his body while still being pursued by that person. Is Satori alright? I was incredibly uneasy. I felt guilty escaping to the shelter cabin as Satori was being assaulted. Be safe. Joining my hands together, I muttered as if praying. Then I heard Mayuzumi shouting, Hey, it's too cold. The bed began to creak. Mayuzumi was trembling. Be quiet and sit down. If we don't conserve, there'll be nothing left by morning. Do you want to die? I feel like I'm dying right now. Do us all a favor and hurry up. <laughs> Yamogi opened his mouth to complain, but only a sigh emerged. There's no other choice. Yamogi stood up from his bed and approached the stove. He started throwing the piled up firewood into the stove. Soon after, the fire grew larger and the air became warmer. Damn it, at this pace, it won't last till morning. Even though he said that, he was trembling as well. He held his hands over the stove. Even as such an experienced mountaineer, Yamogi found the cold in the shelter to be unbearable. His decision to build up the fire may have been based on his judgement that we'd all end up dying from the cold if things continued as they were. I started thinking to myself while blowing on my frozen fingers with white breath. If all the firewood disappears at this rate, how cold will it get? I couldn't even imagine. Satsuri said that he was at ease here. However, with this, there probably isn't any comfortable ground left for him. Because with each passing moment, this place is further transfigured into a freezing hell. However, Sphere was also a hell in another sense. Ah, uh, Satsuri really alright? That's right. I took out the VR with a shaking hand. My other hand clumsily hit the playback switch. The message began to play. Kokoro, at this very moment I'm being chased through Sphere. I ended up jumping here right after I was attacked. I'm begging you, please make it out safely. Damn it, not being able to do anything is so irritating. If your personality ended up dying because of me, I don't know how I'd ever be able to apologize to you. I don't even mind if I lose an arm. So please be safe somehow, Kokoro. The tone of the message sounded almost as if he were throwing up blood. The murderous monster had begun attacking before I transferred, and then in the middle of the attack, Satsuru and I exchanged personalities. That's why he was so impatient. I'm safe, but this time I'm worried about Satoru. My wristwatch was as I thought in my pocket. I'd usually get angry right about now, but right now my wristwatch being taken off allowed me to be able to feel his existence. I'm positive that Satoru, who was inside me, had jumped back to Sphere just as danger drew near. Please be alright. I closed my eyes and clasped my hands together, and desperately prayed while shivering from the cold. Really? We're going back again? DID Breakout. Alright, we're going to wrap this one up here. Because we're out of time for today. This is a mad cliffhanger. Because obviously, shit's about to get very real. Like, I think we might be right at the end here. Because um, we're jumping back and forth every two seconds at this point. I guess we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching, Bruce. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>